A 1-0 victory for the United States over Brazil. Imad Baba, the scorer. Brazil's Pelé, the world's greatest ever player, who ended his career in the USA, was full of praise for the American team. I was obviously disappointed to see the Americans beat Brazil. But although it surprised the world, it did not surprise me. The Americans are now playing quality soccer. In next match, as the German Democratic Republic in white clinically took them apart. The Americans were thrashed 5-2 and had to beat Australia in their next match for a quarter-final place. The Australians in yellow came back from two goals down to draw two all. Both teams were out of the tournament. But the USA, who hosts the World Cup finals in five years, are showing that they're clearly closing the gap on the rest. are proving slowly that we can compete abroad and I think that's probably the biggest thing that we can prove here is that uh, the rest of the world isn't on a pedestal that we can't reach. Politically the Cubans are a complete contrast to the Americans but they're pleased to be back in world soccer. This is the first time that the Caribbean island has qualified for a FIFA World Championship since 1938. For a country as passionate about baseball as it is about socialism, that's no mean achievement. Francisco Gonzalez Mena is the coach for the tournament's rank outsiders. For all our people, physical culture is important, very important, especially for the men. When it comes to sport in our country, whether it's soccer or baseball, people are always interested. In the JVC Cup, the Cubans got off to a bad start when they lost 3-0 to Bahrain. Against host Scotland, it was 3-0 again. In their final match against Ghana, they played out a spirited two-all draw, so at least returned home having achieved one result. But as Cuba bowed out, the four best teams reached the semi-finals. Edinburgh the setting for what could be a history-making moment for Scottish football. Welcome to the second semi-final in FIFA's Premier Youth Football Tournament. Scotland one step away from reaching their first ever FIFA final, where Saudi Arabia are waiting for them at Hampden Park. Scotland have improved with every game over the fortnight of the tournament, and so have their opponents, the European champions Portugal. Eight goals in their four games to date make them the competition's leading scorers. But Scotland have conceded only one goal so far. And these are the names that have won the hearts of the host country. Three of them attached to Arsenal. Two each to Celtic, Dundee and Dundee United. And one apiece to Aberdeen and Morton. Craig Brown, who's Andy Roxburgh's assistant with the senior team, is the man in charge of their under-16s. Portugal feel their reserve goalkeeper Fonseca Nuno because first choice Paulo Santos is on his way home. He dropped his shorts to the crowd in celebrating Portugal's last win, a gesture which has cost the Portuguese a fine of 10,000 Swiss francs and Santos his place in an otherwise unchanged team. The star man is number two Gilles, who's a most athletic striker. 
So, can this Portuguese team deny Scotland their date with destiny? Join us in a moment to find out. Welcome back to the second world and the 16 semi-final at Tynecastle, where the kickoff has been delayed 40 minutes because of the extraordinary interest in this game. There are thousands locked outside, an inspirational atmosphere inside, and an atmosphere which is sure to get to the Portuguese in white. Early mistake there by Abel. And it's going to be quite a test for these uh, Portuguese youngsters. They can rarely have experienced such passion and fervour for an opposing team. Xavier Abel, the right back, certainly felt it there in the opening stages. It's a corner which Downey will take. Way by Pesh. Downey just unable to control it. And the Scots will feel the nerves too. And Scott Marshall, the central defender, who came forward for the corner. taken from the wrong place referee Frenchman Jean-Marie Latigo and a throw for Scotland in this position is as good as a corner because Gary Boland here has got a most prodigious throw on him and Gilles the striker back in defence who gets it clear This is Dickoff. That's a useful effort. Paul Dickoff of Arsenal. A most uh, energetic leader of the Scottish line. This wouldn't drop quite quickly enough for him. And he got underneath it and sliced it well wide. 29,000 capacity sets for Time Castle. And the reserve goalkeeper, Nuno, who's making only his third appearance for his country, is perhaps going to be the man affected most by the extraordinary feeling there is inside the Scottish capital. Real sense of occasion. Alvaro, the Portuguese left back, will take the free kick. Going for Scotland, Brian O'Neill. The heart of their midfield effort. Macmillan with the throw. Pat Gilles with the header on, Lorenzo chasing. The first touch of Big Jim Will who's been working specifically with the uh, Scottish national goalkeeping coach Alan Hodgkinson this week. Found there by the back pass from Scott Marshall. Scottish free kick. in towards McGoldrick who's the big centre forward he'll be under this one too Dickoff looking to feed off him knocked away by Pace the uh, Portuguese champ the uh, captain McGoldrick again and Dickoff once more and Pace in the way again and McGoldrick and that was a conversion <laughs> got a heart as big as any in uh, junior football, Kevin McGoldrick. It was his little header on to start with. 
Downey trying to get in, and here's McGoldrick's effort. Wouldn't quite have gone between the posts. This is Sergio Lorenzo. This is Gilles. And he can do far better than that. He really has been one of the stars of the tournament so far, the Portuguese number two. Keeping Alvaro under pressure. But that, that wasn't a foul, was it? No, corner kick. <laughs> That's the way that they play in Scotland, as the Portuguese are going to find out. And another test for the reserve goalkeeper, Nuno. Pace a little bit bewildered by the sheer competitiveness of the Scottish attack. John Lindsay will take the corner. Keepers come for it, he didn't get to it. He did some help from his captain again. But uh, Fonseca Nuno has had a difficult start. And when a goalkeeper makes that much ground off his line to come for the ball, he's really got to get to it. And he needed some help from Vino to get it clear. The Scots will be doing everything they can now to get the ball as quickly and as often into the Portuguese penalty area whilst Nuno finds his international feet. But these are the European champions they're playing against, don't forget. And this is the tricky Simao, who shields partner in attack. Portuguese junior football very much on the up at the moment because they won the FIFA under 20 title in Saudi Arabia in March. The man in charge of this under-16 team, Carlos Quiros, was the coach for that under-20 success too. That's Adelberto, the central defender, back to Nuno. They were very disappointed to lose Santos, their number one goalkeeper. They firmly believed that he was one of the best in the tournament, but he brought his own downfall by downing his own shorts. And Nuno is now penalised. Well. He certainly didn't exceed the permitted number of steps, so I can only think that time-wasting is the referee's decision. He has been warned once before, and look at this. An indirect free kick, but inside the Portuguese penalty area. And if Nuno was nervous before, I would think he's verging on the suicidal now. You wouldn't want to swap places with him at the moment, would you? Not happy with the wall either. Now, Bain number five and Boland number six are the two Scottish players who usually work out these free kicks. There's Bain, the captain, with his foot over the ball, and Boland just behind him. And Boland can strike them with the left foot. Wall almost on the edge of the six yard box, look. And it's going to be Boland to strike it, and he struck the ground before he struck the ball. You can see the dust that he kicked up. He really scuffed that one. Oh, what a shame. He, very little to aim at. Bain's touch just gave him maybe a quarter of the goal to look at, and Nuno had that covered anyway, and he didn't make a good strike in it. Flick from Simao. That's Figo tumbling to the ground. Wasting again here. Alvaro eventually taking the free kick. Simao coming deep. This is Alvaro again. And that's straight down the throat of Jim Will. Signed up with Arsenal, the uh, Scottish goalkeeper. This is the Celtic left back, Jim Beatty. Good player, the Portuguese captain, Pace. Such a good pass, unless BT read it well.
Goldring. Looking for Dickov. O'Neill in a wee bit late there, but Figo in possession. Now Pace is in trouble. And Dickov was close. Pace wasn't at all happy at the pass that Ad Alberto, the other central defender, gave him. What are you doing? Which side are you on? Simal. here at Tynecastle 29,000 and uh, estimates of quite a few locked outside as Dickoff makes another surging piercing run into the Portuguese penalty area it took three to stop him at the expense of a corner and he's uh, the proverbial pocket dynamo is Robert Dickoff look at him holding them off with his right hand bouncing off them and eventually forcing the corner Lindsay to take. Lindsay again. Kevin Bain, the Scottish captain underneath it. One and two. O'Neill's got a real chance here. Oh, now was he offside? No, he wasn't. That's the clearest chance of the game so far for Brian O'Neill. And he didn't realise what a good chance it was, really. His control let him down somewhat. It was still an opportunity there, but he was off balance and sliced it. Unlucky 13. Well, that's where the Scots would like to see Portuguese players like Fino display their skills. Lindsay didn't think it was a foul, but if they can keep them penned in within 10 yards of their own dead ball line, then he can dribble all he likes. Bolin again with a long throw. Nuno did a bit better that time, punched just clearing the penalty area. Boland all left foot, McColdrick waiting. Beatty just taking a bit too much on there. And Abel, the right back, is able to recover. Full mark to the tournament organisers. The uh, admission prices at Tyne Castle for this game, just £3 for an adult and then encouraging fathers to bring their youngsters along too, but they just didn't anticipate this kind of interest. Obviously, Scotland's success in the tournament has added to his appeal. That's a great run from the back by Marshall. An offside flag up. I don't think it was against Marshall. I think it was against Kevin McGoldrick, the striker who was supporting him. Long way back for Marshall when you've taking strides from your own half of the field to support your attack and then find that a colleague has strayed offside and it's all fruitless. But it's the quality of the football that's been played by all the competing nations which has really captured the imagination of the Scottish public. Shield chasing through again, but he's been very much on the fringe of the game so far. Thanks to the efforts of people like John Lindsay. his body there almost as a catapult sent and Alberto flying quite a combination the big McGoldrick there and the smaller busy figure of Paul Dickoff the two men who carry the Scottish goal scoring hopes pace with the free kick that's good control by Gilles and header by uh, Marshall. Bowden just forced out of play by the Portuguese striker. Five minutes of the first half remaining. Still waiting for the first goal. Ian Downey trying to provide it. This is Caniana. Bino. Figo. Now he's 
turned away from Lindsay there. And good skill by Figo. Now Will had to make the save. Quite the power that Luis Figo would have wanted. But the first reply, really, from Portugal in the closing minutes of the first half, it was a poke shot. Said, I think almost with a toe end, but it was bouncing and bobbling, and Will had to get down quickly. But now Scotland have a free kick at the other end of the field. Let's see what Boland and Bain can come up with here. Referee may have some language problems, but. Um, as all Frenchmen do, he uses his hands and eyes to some effect. Bowler running over it, Bain. Oh, he's played Bowler in here, and the goalkeeper's going to have to be sharp, and he did well, actually, Nuno. It's a good move, wasn't it? The one or two uh, senior managers and coaches wanting to copy that one in the months ahead. Bain played Bowler in, and Nuno, having come a long way, had to get to the ball and did. Header away by Figo. This is McGoldrick. Gilles back there on the edge of his own penalty area. Macmillan is back there. Oh, it's not the best of back passes. And Will had to be very quick. Nice to see a goalkeeper who can not only conduct himself well with the save, but not put any extra pressure on a fullback who knew he'd made a mistake. Just a little outstretched hand, appreciating that it wasn't the best of passes. That wasn't the best of tackles either by Kanyana on BT, and that's a yellow card. Well, it was clumsy rather than dangerous. And Kanyana may feel a little bit aggrieved there. Well, since we've seen sunglasses in the Scottish football ground, it's a lovely evening in Tynecastle. Bowler with the free kick. Gilles. Well left, this is Simao. Free kick. Feeney's trip was a bit of a dive. I think he did catch the uh, Portuguese striker. Here's the challenge coming up. Yeah, he just nicked it away from the Scottish defender at full stretch. Maybe just caught him, but it was... Uh, Pike with triple somersault just to make sure. Number four, Figo to strike it. Dickoff blocked it. Alvaro. Dickoff's in there again. This is Samal though. Well, that's a great ball. Alvaro the fullback. And Alberto quite directed that he would have wished the central defender fought for the original free kick but the Portuguese have just given us a little insight into their European champion credentials in the closing minutes of this first half Alvaro's cross and Ad Alberto is trying to glance the header did so but beyond the far post Scotland had things pretty much their own way in the first half. But if they need a, a little reminder just to take into the interval with them, and I'm sure that the coaches Craig Brown and Ross Matthew will provide one anyway, then this bright Portuguese conclusion to the half has certainly provided it. Here's McGoldrick. And now Dickoff. Downey arriving. I'm not sure that Alvaro got the ball there, but referee thought so and this is Gilles breaking into the corner and Scotland a bit stretched again and O'Neill's back there just beating Lorenzo to the cross and then we get clear but Portugal will certainly have the upper hand in the closing minutes of the half so given Scotland more to think about in the last five minutes and they did in the first 35. 
It's a half that finishes goalless. The best chance falling to Scotland's number 13, Brian O'Neill, in their brightest patch. One goal might just win this semi-final. We'll be back in just a moment to see if we can find a goal for you. Scotland and Portugal, 40 minutes away from the final of FIFA's World Under-16 tournament. Welcome back to Tyne Castle, where a capacity crowd that had to wait an extra 40 minutes for everyone to be accommodated. We're still waiting for the Scotland girl that would make their wait well worthwhile. Scotland in blue, Portugal in white. Certainly the Portuguese in the closing minutes of the first half gave notice of their European Championship potential. And Tulipa, number 16, is their half-time substitute. A midfield player replacing another midfield player, Sergio Lorenzo. Smart save by Fonseca Luna, the reserve Portuguese goalkeeper who's grown in confidence as the half's gone on. Dickoff trying to get in there. He may just have been held off by the defender at Alberto. Certainly felt he was. Here's Tulipa. He's a more powerful type of midfield player than Lorenzo, the man he's replaced. Here's Samao with that swinging right arm, dumping the shot. You want to get in the way of it, would you? Got him nowhere fast. Well, he's run a corner kick. What a strange little uh, characteristic that is. You get an eyeful if you got too close to him. Figo with a header on, that was dangerous. Gilles trying to keep it in. This is Abel, and that's a poor cross, and Jim Will, who came for that corner. Always difficult to deal with a well-executed near-post corner, and there's Will trying to get there, but Figo just beat him to it. From that point onwards, the defence is always wrong-footed, and it was big Kevin McGoldrick, the striker who was back there, who just poked it away from Gilles and forced him wide. Portugal won the uh, European Championship with a 4-1 victory in the final over East Germany in Denmark. Scotland did play in that tournament and they didn't win a game in their group with uh, East Germany, the Soviet Union and Italy. They qualified as the host nation. And uh, Dickoff chasing a lost cause there, forcing the throw in. Boland will take it. Sending Figo over just to stand in his way, become more and more aware of the threat of the Scottish long throw specialist. Figo's been moved away. Goalkeeper has come, just got to it. Here's Gary Bolin again. That's a good effort with the left foot. Thank goodness he got a hold of that. The goalkeeper was just off the line too. It was a dipping shot. You might have
might be being a bit kind of Boland to say that he spotted the keeper of his line. Or maybe he did. And it almost dipped enough. Just listen to the feeling for the game. Well, these Scottish fans are whipping up inside Tyne Castle. Must be an inspiration to these young fans. The young players, Edmund Coldrick with a flick on, and O'Neill in with a chance and pasted really well. And a little purple patch like this develops. It becomes more and more difficult for the visiting team to get out of their own half. That was good defending by Pace. Downey winning the corner of Sumar. Now, is this the moment for Scotland? They've got the big man, Bain and Marshall Ford from the back. Boland will take the corner. McGoldrick with the header. Here's a chance for Dickholm. He just couldn't turn. Poked away from him by Tulip for the substitute. Oh, and Paul Dickoff knows if he could have just pivoted there. What a great opportunity he had. He couldn't quite control it, almost got caught between his legs. Darn it. Or worse to that effect. Lindsay with the corner. It's McGoldrick again. O'Neill trying to get there. And... Uh, <laughs> Little bang on the head, a bump ball and a bang. I don't think there was anything much to it. It was O'Neill who went in. But just uh, an indication of the pressure that Portugal are under. Who know, couldn't get to the ball for his own defender at first. Chasing Pace down and forcing a corner. Oh, calm down, yes. And you. <laughs> I think it's the blind leader, the blind back there at the moment. I don't think, I don't know who's the more nervous, the defender or the goalkeeper. Pace was trying to look cool. Here they come again. Oh, almost a chance for McGoldrick. Bang in the face. Wouldn't mind if that if the header had gone in. They sense that the breakthrough may be close. And that's the sort of error that's giving them the encouragement. Portugal are really rattled. Handball. Going so well for Scotland that one thing that they've got to remember is the quality of the opposition. You just can't take a reputation like Portugal's lightly. And they're capable of surviving this and then suddenly coming back at you. Simao. But uh, no sign of that happening at the moment. And here's Dickoff chasing again. My goodness, he's a handful. And Adalberto could just get to him with some help from Pesh. Dickov in again. He really is such a brave little striker. Gary Boland. But courage is a quality easy to come by. You're wearing a blue jersey in this sort of atmosphere. Good work by Tunica. McMillan's back there. Oh, and Alvaro got in. Is that a penalty? Oh, no, he's not giving it. Oh, Alvaro can't believe it. Well, Tom McMillan there was caught napping. And Scotland have had a major escape there. Because Alvaro, the fullback, stole up behind McMillan. And it looked to me as if he was tripped. Now, what's your verdict? As McMillan calling for the goalkeeper to come, he's not aware of Alvaro at all, or he definitely caught the fullback. That's a let off for Scotland. And that's 
just the tonic that the Portuguese needed, although Peter getting away with a firm challenge on Simão. And Dickoff putting pace under pressure and Scotland win a corner. Officers of that, the lapse didn't happen. Scotland keeping up the pressure. Now beat his challenge on Simo. Well, he got the ball. I think he pushed the defender after he won the ball. Scottish corner. Lindsay. O'Neill with a header. Oh, it's play with a goal. Brian O'Neill puts Scotland into the lead and maybe into the final. It was a towering header. A real British goal. Oh, look at the climb. Goalkeeper came and didn't get there. And Brian O'Neill bulleted the header into the corner of the goal. And Scotland have deserved that lead. It's come 14 minutes into the second half. It's Brian O'Neill's first of the tournament. And if the Portuguese thought that the atmosphere in Tynecastle was electric before that goal. Just wait till these Scottish fans turn up the volume now. They've got the goal that they queued for. One of the Scottish coaches, Ross Matthew, living every second of this semi-final. There's a look of wonder in his face, isn't there? Wide-eyed. They weren't given any sort of chance before the tournament. And now, they're within sight of the final. And that goal coming within minutes, seconds almost, of Portugal having a, a very strong penalty appeal turned down. And that could prove to be the crucial period in this game. Bino goes down. Scott's inevitably excited now. They've got to try and keep their composure. Vigo just outside the penalty area. The shot there was by Alvaro. It was sliced anyway. And the foul was by Beatty. The only concern you'd have to score at the moment is that they've just got to get their feet back on the ground. O'Neill's goal has given them a terrific lift, but it's uh, lifted them onto cloud nine, and they've just got to keep their heads. There's no saying about old heads on young shoulders in football, and that's what Scotland need at the moment. Portugal preparing to make a substitution. Number 10 is Rui Capucho. Caniana is the man going off. And Portugal have used both their substitutes. Capucho, number 10, and Tulipa has had quite an impact on the game. Number 16 since coming on at half time. This is Figo. Good skill. Oh, my word, that was a rather dangerous challenge by Abel. Good work by Alvaro. Here's Tudipa. Gilles, of whom we've seen precious little. Kevin Bain, the uh, Scotland captain, the number five, has done a great marking job on Gilles. Dickoff, Downey, way by Abel. Here's Tudipa again. And Alvaro. Bit more fight about Portugal now. They've got to fight for their lives in this tournament. There's 
Bain wearing the white armband, number five. And there's Gilles next to him. They've never been far apart. And Gilles has rarely had the upper hand. And that's a mistake by Capuccio, the substitute, which is going to give Scotland another corner kick. And another trial for Nuno, the goalkeeper. McGoldrick, the big centre forward. Gary Boland will take it. Well, goalkeepers made a mess of that. Bain with a chance. A free kick. It would have counted. And Kevin Bain could have capped his performance there with what could have been a winning goal. There wasn't a Scottish player anywhere near Nuno. And Bain just screwed it wide. Great tackle. They're really fired up. That was Gary Bolan on Abel here, the fullback. So they've got to keep this pressure on, Scotland. Abel. Gilles. Nice one, two with Bino. Gilles through. Ooh, good tackle by Will, a goalkeeper. There's a little reminder of what Gilles can do. Sharp little combination with Bino, the wall pass, releasing him with the help and deflection, and Will, who might have gone in with his hands, went in with his feet, and made as clean a tackle as we've seen in the game. And Ross Matthew just can't get his messages over at the moment, it's far too loud. I'm not sure that he's got anything very considered to say. It's not that sort of situation now. All you can ask these young players to do is to go through the pain barrier and hold on. They've done it very effectively so far, but here's Page. Gilles with a volley, blocked by Bain. On the corner. Gilles, the Benfica striker who scored 10 goals in the European Championship Finals for Portugal and who's been too hot to hold in the group games en route to this semi-final. Well checked so far today by Scotland. And there's a free header there though and it's a terrific save by Will from Bino. Gilles, oh, that was a bit dramatic from Gilles. It was certainly dramatic for Will who made a great clawing save there from the header that was on its way in from Bino ten minutes remaining and the Scotland lead looking more precarious than it has done at any stage in this match here's Dickoff He's just never beaten, is he? Good take that by Nuno. Terrific work again, though, by Dickoff. Marshall's header. It's going to get there. Saved. It's there. Pino scored for Portugal. No, he's disallowed it. Well, he was not side. Pino's goal's been ruled out. Handball. He must have nutted on with his hand when he was lying on the ground. Scotland have got off the hook again now. Where's the handball? As he pushes it past the keeper there. Well, I don't know that that wasn't accidental. That's a very harsh decision. Portuguese coaches can't believe it. They <laughs> then he swallowed his cigarette. In fact, I don't know that Vina wasn't brought down by the goalkeeper once he nudged it past him. Jim Will came flying out and seemed to catch Vina, and that's what sent him tumbling. But it didn't look like deliberate handball. <laughs> Goodness knows what Ross Matthew and his chief coach Craig Brown are talking about. Craig Brown up in the grandstand. I think the question is, why did he disallow it? And I think the answer is, who cares? Scotland are still in front. 
Bell. Here's Bino, the man who had the goal disallowed. It's a goal kick. Well, the Portuguese have had one or two things to say about one or two matters in this tournament. They were the ones who complained about the uh, age of some of the Saudi Arabian players they face in the first match. Their chances of reaching the final and facing Saudi Arabia again are uh, rapidly disappearing with the help, it has to be said, of a couple of very controversial refereeing decisions. And the Scots now want to make a substitution and bring on Billy Dolan. Portugal certainly would have strong claims to believe they should have had a penalty and a goal in this second half. This is McGoldrick. <laughs> Running his heart out of the Scottish cause again, the big number 10. Got through the sandwich. And then held up by Abel. It's... Uh, John Lindsay, the man who got the injury time winner in the quarterfinal against East Germany, who comes off. And Billy Dolan from East Kilbride, the Celtic player, who's uh, a defender really by trade. Looks like he's going to play in a more defensive role in the middle of the midfield than uh, Lindsay was doing, just to try and shore things up for Scotland, who are very close. Dickoff winning the ball. got to hold things together at the back now for Scotland. Good header by Boland that time. But Portugal are finishing strongly. Here's Figo. Good work though by Dickoff. What a terrific player he is. Has inspirational stuff and he's found McGoldrick too. Down it. Awkward clearance for Pace at the near post. Well, every time you feel as though the Scots are on their last legs and are hanging on, they find a little bit more energy and a little bit more belief in themselves to give Portugal something to think about. Tulipper. Held up by Dolan and by McMillan. Good skill by McMillan. And Dickoff's in there again. And here goes McGoldrick. And he's got Gary Boland to his left. And Boland's got a chance to tie it up. Oh, and he just screwed it wide. Well, they've had their money's worth. It's been a terrific match, full of talking points. I'm full of the most intense commitment, and Gary Bowden has given as much as anybody a couple of yards away from putting it beyond Portugal. Well played, Beatty. Bowden again. McGoldrick. Beatty's continued the run. Dick off low. Couldn't quite turn away from Ad Alberto. Whoever it was who thought up the football phrase, end-to-end -end stuff, had matches like this one in mind. And even though we're in the dying minutes now, you sense there could be another goal. You sense the dramas are not finished. Gilles. Here's Gilles again. Ball for Alvaro, Marshall did well. Pills for handball. Every man and lad inside Tynecastle was yelling there, but the referee wasn't interested. Bain 
been sticking so close to Gilles and getting a foot in again. Gilles denied once more. Started by Beatty. It's a cool back pass. Dickoff epitomising the Scottish spirit. And it may just have been the difference between these two sides. A gold brick. Woolies committed place. Has he won a corner? Yes, he has. It's a chance for a breather as much as anything. The crowd aren't taking a breather, though. Dolan with the corner. Beatty. Brought down was he, yes. Every decision now, the subject of remarkable expressions and gestures from the players of both sides. Simao couldn't believe that he was penalised. Patience, the captain, just questioning the decision. Kevin Bain, the Scotland captain, to take it. Beatty, number three, behind him. Boland to his right is usually involved in these. Take a breath, son. No. Whatever the Scots rehearsed on the training ground, I'm sure that the uh, Portuguese player Manuel Bino wasn't a part of it, but he wanted to be. And he's been shown a yellow card for his troubles. It's not been much of a day for him. He's 10 yards from the ball. Take two. It's Bain to strike it. Always rising. been quite a captain though for Scotland mm. keep your shape that's the message with a minute to go Marshall not trusting the back pass they're very very close now Scotland everybody tapping the watch Here's Tuniper. Pace. Abel. Scotland stretched. Tuniper with a header. Ooh, it wasn't far away. On oh, the half time substitute, has done as well as anybody on the field in this second half. Almost grabbing a reward. Not the tallest man inside the box, but he was one of the most determined. It was a good jump. And how much did that miss by a foot, maybe? Ross Matthew thought it was closer. Julie Perragay. Terrific finish by Portugal. Alvaro. Beatty winning the header. Figo. Blocked by Marshall. Bowling with the back pass. If you didn't know better, you'd think he was teasing us. Just got to Jim Will. Deep in stoppage time. All eyes on Mr. Latigo. Gil forward. Macmillan. That was a more decisive back pass. And Alberto bowling in. Good play again. Such a stubborn player. 
Not sure on talent either, Gary Boland. Found his range with his left foot in the second half. Twice in the last five minutes, he's come desperately close to easing all the tension inside Tyne Castle. Only the final whistle can do that now. Portuguese free kick. One last throw of the dice for the European champions. Header away by Kevin Bain, and that's fitting because the captain has been inspirational, and the captain will lead Scotland to the World Youth Cup final. No hopeless when the tournament started, no holding them since. They've won the hearts of the Scottish nation, and now they can win junior football's most glittering prize. They play with such pride and with such passion, and they play their way to the final against Saudi Arabia. It's a final you can see on Eurosport, thanks to this goal from the Scottish hero, Brian O'Neill.